now you can see this is what we have. The alpha values, now every point here is exactly the same size, but some of them we see more than others because we've now scaled the alpha by the population. And if we wanted this to be like blue or we wanted to compare apples to apples, maybe what we could do is change the color of both of these to be the same. What if we just had mm, like a purpley color? And purple is what we get when we mix red and blue. And so what we could do, like this command here, is giving us values in the alpha position. So one of the things we could do is say our GBA list is, or maybe we just want red to keep it simple. So the red is the first value. So that would be column zero. And what I want this to be is all ones. Another thing way that we could do this uh, is that we could set it to a particular color that um, the program will recognize or a name of a color that the program will recognize like R but in this case we're just setting the red which is the first column to one so now I have this overlap of red where the alpha is scaled let's compare it to this where we scaled the size well that's pretty easy to do we could just say this color is red using the keyword R for red Whoops, color is, oh, red. I needed a comma here. That is what's going on. I have to separate each one of these flags. So, there we go. Now we can compare exactly these two plots. In this plot, we've kept the alpha the same, which is 0.1, and we've scaled the size of each point by its relative population. Down here, we've kept the size exactly the same, but we've scaled the alpha by its relative population. And you can see that these two are different. In this case, everything is a little bit, shows up a little bit more. Whereas down here, the population centers are a little bit more emphasized. Of course, we could like adjust this some. Maybe we could say that the size should be two and see if that like makes this any better. But really, because we're scaling things by the alpha value, it's still gonna not make it easy to see the places where we don't have much population density. So what I would say is that this top one is allowing us to see many of the rural areas. The question is, as always, what are you trying to show? Right? Do we want to emphasize every single city so that we can see everything? Then use something like this, maybe where we scale the size and we have the alpha constant. Do you want to only show the most populous places? Then maybe keep the size constant and scale the alpha by the population. And I think like as a native Californian, this is the map I think of when I think of California. A lot of people here in the Bay Area a lot of people in LA, a lot of people in San Diego, some people up this I-5 corridor into Sacramento. And then there's like a few people that are up near Shasta, some people on the coast here, not much going on in these hills. To me as a Californian, like this is a little bit less recognizable because I'm not used to thinking of things happening so much out here. Of course, that could be my bias having grown up out here in the Bay Area. If we wanted to, we could try to also express differences in colors for differences in prices or something else. For instance, let's say that what we wanted was something like the median house value. Then we could go in and we could do what we did for population, which was, if you remember, we took the population and divided by the max population. That gave us a normalized population distribution. And if we did that, then we could also end up with variations in colors. So let's see how that would work here. And then we'll see a slightly easier way to do this at the end of the video. Basically, rather than having the population, let's look at the prices. So what if it was housing and then 
we can go back to the top and see what we should call this. It would be the median house value. So I'll just double click so I can highlight it and copy it. And then I'll go back and say median house value. And then again, just as we did before, we want the maximum value of that. This is a function, so it goes between two parentheses. And then the square brackets so that we can refer to something by its name, and that would be the median house value. Now we would have a range of values for red. That means that we would basically scale from zero to one, zero being no red, so everything would be black, or one, which is it was red. So let's see what that looks like. Ah, I had forgotten the housing here. Okay, try again. Now you can see that we scale from black, which would be the lowest prices, up to red, which is the highest prices. We could also add in other colors if we wanted. For instance, what if we wanted to have not only red, but blue, and we could create a sliding scale. So if I put in RGBA list, now instead of the red channel, let's think about the blue channel. So red is zero, green is one, blue is two. And then what we could do is we could have one minus this value. And so what that's going to do then is it's gonna basically, when we have small values for the red, we'll have large values for the blue and vice versa. So then I'll hit enter or run. And now what you should see is that we have colors that vary from all the way blue to all the way red, passing through purple. And so this is one way that we could create a color scheme that's based upon our data. But there are other ways to do it as well. And I think the easiest way to illustrate this is to go back up here to the first part where we only had a single alpha value and we had the color as red. So I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh this so that you can see that is what I have. I have things where the size now is tied to the population. That's okay, let's leave it like that for just a moment. Instead of color being pointed towards a particular color, what we wanna do is we say we want to tie the color to some value. For instance, what if we just stay with the median house value that we had before? And in fact, I don't need all of that that I had, so let's just go back up and rather than typing it, I'll just copy and paste it in to down here. We have the median house value. So we're saying the color is tied to the median house value. Let's see what happens if we try to run this. Now what we get is grayscale, and you can see it put a new scale to the side of the map, running from white to gray. So this is another way that we can have the small cities hard to see and the large cities easy to see. The higher the cost, the more gray, as shown here. Part of the reason it's gray is because our alpha is low. So what if I set this instead of to 0.1 to 1? Now you can see that we run from white to black. And there you go. It looks pretty good. We could also change the size so that it is not directly tied to the housing population or scaled by population, but is itself independent. But let's leave it like this for right now. What if we wanted something that wasn't just black and white? Well, it turns out that matplotlib has an option to do that, and it's called color mapping. And so if I go to the documentation for matplotlib, I can go to the color maps section of this, choosing color masks in matplotlib. It'll give you examples of how this works, what the different names are that you could pick. And so you could have several different sequential themes and several different diverging themes. It'll give you examples of what these are. So here are the sequential color maps. We have grays, which is essentially what we have defaulted to by not supplying a name. But we have other ones like oranges, we have pink, spring, hot, and then we have AMF hot, 
copper. Then we have diverging color maps. Those are ones that basically have a value that's distinct in the middle. And then we see differences in the saturation oftentimes to either side, although that's not always the only way we do this. We would use a diverging color map in cases where there is a median value that has a clear meaning. I think for us, it's more like one of these sequential maps where we have values that are small and values that are large and we would like to go from one to the other. So what about like this or red? I think that might look nice. Let's go back to our data and see how we would implement that. We've already said that our color is tied to this particular column up here. And we haven't had to say housing to say this because remember we're plotting from housing and then we have inside of this function, we can just refer directly back to this. So we have the color. What we want to do is say color map equals plt.get cmap. So we're going to say that the color map is going to be equal to, and now let's go get a color map. And we said that what we were interested in, which we'll identify by the string ORRD. Now we run from sort of this light color to this red color, and we have that scale. That's quite nice. And of course, we could pick other ones, like a diverging color map scheme, which is cool, warm. That's an example of one that runs red and blue. And then you'll see when this pops up that we go from blue through a white up to red.